Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Amherst Community Chat for Thursday, December 17th. We will not be having chats the next two Thursdays due to the holidays, so we will um, launch back again at January 7th. I want to welcome today our public health director for the town of Amherst, Emma Dragon, who's joining myself and your town manager, Paul Bockelman. So uh, to kick things off, I'm going to have Paul do a quick report out and then Emma's going to um, do the same and then we'll be able to take live questions in the room, um, as well as some questions that have been submitted to us. Thanks, Brianna. So yeah, it's a snowy uh, Thursday uh, right now, noon, and uh, DPW has been in since about 11 last night, uh, plowing roads. They were very grateful for everybody who was off of the roads. It made their lives a lot easier. We have um, reorganized things at DPW in terms of their plow schedules and where they're going. So it's all a little bit new for a lot of folks. So um, having this first one be a, a light snow first off and being um, having people not on the streets and uh, obeying the um, governor's request to stay home was really helpful to folks. Uh, they'll be out there all day today as well. We anticipate that one of the nights this weekend we'll, we'll bring them back in to do snow removal in downtown. So as long as people can keep uh, not parking in the um, uh, on the streets, uh, that's very helpful to them. So, and just credit to the DPW folks um, who are just out there. You know, they it's a long night for them, and they're still out there right now. And to our facilities folks for clearing the, the areas around the town hall. Um, Jones Library, you know, Bank Center, places like that. That's it. Great, thank you, Paul. And since Emma is relatively new, I'm gonna just have her do a little quick intro of um, who she is before she gives a quick report out on her um, department. Hello, everybody. I'm really happy to be here for the second time already. Can you believe that I've been here since the beginning of November? It feels like I have been here forever because of all of the great stuff that we're working on. Um, I am Emma. I'm the new public health director for the town of Amherst. My, I am a nurse and I also have my graduate degree in emergency and disaster management. So um, I'm really happy to be here and do the work. Uh, we have a great team, Jennifer Brown, the public health nurse, and I know Julie Fetterman, my predecessor in this role, uh, really helped build a good department to be able to be able to be successful in the work that we're doing. So right now with the public health department, uh, we've been doing a lot in terms of surveillance and testing, doing that active contact tracing, working with the contact tracing collaborative. So that way we can identify cases and connect uh, affected families and patients with resources in our community that are available if they need assistance for social services, like food, rental assistance, uh, medications, trying to get them hooked up in those ways. And then also we're starting to pivot towards the vaccine, which I know people have heard a lot about and learning more about that. We are enrolled uh, in the Massachusetts vaccine uh, plan. Um, so we are waiting for the delegation and information to come through the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. And, and we are ready uh, to be involved in that for our community to be able to make sure that our community will get the vaccines as they become available. I know that we've had a lot of great um, experienced individuals that want to be volunteers. I think that's something really important to highlight in our community. And, and we want to be able to engage all of our volunteers in a thoughtful way and whatever their specialties are. So in order to do that, we're, in, um, lost the word, has that ever happened to anybody? Isn't that so funny when that happens? We're directing everyone to en enroll with the MRC, the Massachusetts Reserve Corps. So that way we can be able to access you in a way that's gonna be the best for everybody um, when the time comes to do that vaccine management. Do you have to be a medical professional to join into that? You don't, that's a great question, Paul. So lots of people think that you have to be, but there are many other roles that are possibly gonna have to be engaged, whether it's record keeping or helping maybe direct flow as people maybe come into a vaccine uh, administration plan, um, but that's more to come. So you don't necessarily have to be a medical professional, a doctor or a nurse. <laughs> Um, but maybe with registration or people coming in, um, 
or sort of, like the, sort of like the National Guard for medical professionals. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the National Guard. Huh. Yep. There's lots of different ways that people can be helpful, okay. and the MRC as well. I mean, they've they've helped with people making masks and cloth masks and drives like that. Um, so there's many ways that people can be helpful and engage with the community throughout Massachusetts and these efforts during this time. And we can add a link to our AmherstCOVID19.org page um, that, that goes to that, right, Emma? I can get that information up there for people to find. Absolutely. Thank you for thinking of that, Brianna. All right. So I just want to remind the folks who are joining us live, um, we would love to hear from you. You can use the Q&A function within Zoom. You can raise your hand within Zoom um, and we'll bring you into the room or star nine if you're calling in from a phone. So uh, I'll start with one of the questions that we got sent in. So this person was excited to hear about the, the testing at UMass and they saw that the town is now offering drive up testing and they want to know what the difference is. Um, are they the same thing? or is one for a certain population? I love that question because that's definitely something that I know we're talking about that Paul and I have been talking about and wanting to make sure is, is pretty clear for our community because it can be so confusing because there's so many efforts going on right now. So the COVID-19 testing at the Mullen Center is an asymptomatic uh, testing facility for the community for anyone throughout our area, not just Amherst residents or Amherst employees. Those are, it typically operates Monday through Thursday from the hours of nine to 4.30. It's sign up in advance. And, and um, after January 21st, there will be limited hours going through the 15th, but that testing is available pretty consistently for our public. There's a wide availability for that. Um, and th that is for individuals that are over the age of 10 and that are asymptomatic, meaning that they feel like they don't have COVID and don't have the symptoms of COVID. Sore throat, fever, cough, body aches, those kind of things that people might experience. And if they don't have a known exposure to COVID-19, meaning that they have not been in close contact with someone that has COVID-19. With UMass coming on board with this great testing and availability for our community, I know that's something that we identified on the local level is a need for testing, uh, for quicker testing, for people who think that they have COVID, have those symptoms, that sore throat, cough, fever, body aches, uh, and also those individuals that feel like they've been exposed and are needing testing to come out of quarantine or possibly identify if they're in fact becoming infected with COVID as well. So in, in order to meet that need, uh, we were able through CARES grants that are available left over um, through really diligent work and planning. Um, we've been able to coordinate a testing site at the Mill River Recreation Site tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 11, which is at 95 Montague Road in Amherst, of course. And it's drive up, it will be outdoors. So it will feel a little chilly, but we're gonna be there and, and ready to see people that need testing. Um, and we're happy to do that. Oh, and it can, any, any ages can come too. And, and the link for that is on our um, on our homepage, amersma.gov in the news section, but it's also at um, our COVID information page, amerscovid19.org, um, because the appointment is required. But Emma informed me this morning that there's still plenty of slots for tomorrow. So um, if any of that applies to you or a friend or a neighbor, please share that information with them. I do see that Ken has his, his hand up. So I'm going to pull Ken in. If you could unmute and introduce yourself, Ken. Thank you. I'm Ken Rosenthal. I live at Sunset Avenue. I wanted to tell you that I, uh, at Paul's suggestion, I signed up for the community testing at the university on Monday. And I want everybody to know how easy and fast it was. From the time I left my car in the free parking lot until I got back into my car was 10 minutes. And half of that time was spent walking to and from the Mullen Center. Because we're pre-registered, I first was uh, shown to a desk where they confirm my registration and handed me a vial, which I then carried to the next place where it was a self-administering test. I didn't know that was gonna happen that way. With a Q-tip, 
and a smaller Q-tip, not the long one that scares everybody. It never <laughs> my brain. The woman behind, and, 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 and the attendants are behind the screen, so you're never close. The woman behind was monitoring me, and she watched what I did, approved it, and then I put the swabs in the vial, left it on the proper place, and, and left the building. And uh, 20, uh, 48 hours later, I got my result negative, thank you very much. And it was so easy to do and so convenient. The pre-registration really helps. The only inconvenience is trying to get the results. You have to enter a, a, a password that they give you, which is you know a little complicated. I think they could improve that. Emma, I wanna tell you quickly about a similar process in New Jersey where my daughter lives. The county runs it and it's, and it's an at-home test. So what they're doing is mailing you those same vials then they require that you go onto your computer so that they can observe you giving yourself the test. So it's a Zoom uh, engagement. And then you put the vials back in the mail and send it back to them. So you never leave your home and the county health officer is satisfied that you have administered the test in the proper way. So that's just a variation on that theme. And thank you, thank you all for making this possible for us asymptomatic folks to give us the reassurance that this test did give me. Thank you. So Ken, are you gonna go every week now? No, uh, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> but I'm ready to go next month. And um, you, know, you know, and especially if I, if I seem to be spending more time engaging with people than I intend to, and I'm really trying to be totally isolated, but you know, going into a store or coming out, uh, going into a, at a gas pump and passing somebody by, um, maybe I'll do it in January. I'm comfortable for, for the now. Thank you, Ken. And thank you for getting tested and sharing your experience. I know both Paul and I, um, I'm not sure if Emma has gone down yet, but we both did that this week. And it, I had the very same experience, very easy, um, quick results. And I'm already signed up for next week. So thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, and I think the concept is that they want, you know, it's, it's asymptomatic testing is to try to get as many people tested on a regular basis. You can't do it more than once a week, but you can do it once a week, right, Emma? That's right, Paul. Yeah. Well, Paul, Paul, do you do you encourage me to to go back again and do this every week? I didn't know that that I thought I was giving them some data that they could use, but I didn't know that they wanted to see me very frequently. I I could do it. <laughs> if you want. That's Emma question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think right now, I think the more testing, the better, because there are is such a link with the asymptomatic spread with this virus. I think it's with it still being such a novel virus, we're learning more about it each day and how it evolves. So I think um, the importance of people getting tested, especially through this asymptomatic testing available here at UMass, um, I think we should engage you utilize it to our benefit for our, the Hampshire community. So there's a benefit to the community aside from to myself from having this test. Absolutely, Ken, that's a great statement. And I fully back that. Thank you. All right, great, thank you, Ken. Thanks, Ken. I just want to do a quick reminder for the, the folks who are in the room. If you have a comment or question like Ken just had, um, feel free to raise your hand so we can bring you in the room or use the Q&A function. I'll be monitoring that in case you have a question or comment to pop in there. So another question that we had, um, I guess this one would be for Emma. Are you seeing case counts increase? Um, if so, where are the increases incur occurring in our community? Mm. Yes, so we are seeing case counts increase. Uh, over the weekend was our kind of ebb um, to the amount. Last weekend we saw about a total of 35 cases come through between Saturday and Sunday. The majority of the cases that we're seeing at this time aren't uh, student population related with our colleges, they are really multi-generational. So they're throughout the age span. Uh, last month when I started and started to look at the data for Amherst, it was really interesting to see that there wasn't a lot of our elderly population becoming positive with this, but we are starting to see that again, like we did in April and May of this past year during the first surge. 
uh, in addition to those multi-generational homes where we're seeing it, um, we're also seeing it in the congregate living settings, meaning group homes, uh, apartment buildings with, with roommates, um, and then also our, our local nursing facilities and skilled nursing facilities. So that's a good question. I think it's a meaningful question um, in terms of also the shift of where we're seeing the density of our cases is no longer with our young adults. It's really throughout the lifespan. I missed, what, I missed a piece of it. You said it is college related or it's not college related? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I tend to mumble, Paul, and I apologize <laughs> for that because I get so excited. The words just want to come out before they're fully formed and I can articulate them in a meaningful way. They, they do not seem to be college related at mm -hmm. this time. There are a few here or there, but the large amount of them are not college related. They're throughout our community. And we're seeing an increase in the number of cases, just like the rest of the country is. Our numbers are ticking up. Yes, that's that's absolutely Scary. true. Yep. All right, so we have another question here um, in regards to collaboration with the state public health team. So how often are you in communication with them? And are there um, things that they've been alerting the community for that might take place over the next couple of weeks and months, um, trends that they see? Yeah, so uh, I know that we have twice weekly local boards of health calls with de the Department of Public Health, not only just those ca calls and webinars, but we are communicating with state epidemiologists every day, or the vaccine branch of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health really trying to gear up so we're prepared for when those vaccines come. Um, with the next couple of weeks, the next like four to six weeks, they, we all, um, I think, see a light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine rolling out. Um, but I think it's important for us all to remember that we are really in the thick of it right now. And while we can all be hopeful for the vaccine to come and be distributed on the community level as a generality, hopefully the goal is, I believe, April or so at this time, that the Hampshire community, uh, Hampshire County is, is not immune to the impacts of COVID-19 and that approximately half of the people in Massachusetts have never felt sick with it and can still spread the virus, which is why that asymptomatic testing at UMass is so important to go to. So please use that if you, it's appropriate for you. And that public health departments um, are observing community spread and that we want to urge everyone within our community to continue to do the things that we've been talking about, to wear a mask, even if it's inconvenient, wash your hands, sometimes even if they feel clean, avoid groups, even if it means meet, meeting virtually with others, just like we're doing in this virtual room today, and keep distance from others, especially um, those that live outside of your home, even if it means possibly not hugging your grandchildren. Um, we're coming into uh, another holiday season, I think, that in the public health realm, and, and I think a lot in our community, we've seen the outcomes of a lot of individuals getting together as small groups over Thanksgiving and the impacts of that as we've gone into the second surge. And I just want to encourage everyone. I know it's really, really hard work and we're all in this together, but um, during the next couple of weeks, really just try to stay home as much as you can and do all of the great hard work that we've been doing for the past 10 months of the pandemic. And we're going to come through the other side of this if everyone does that work. Great. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. So this might be a more general question for both Paul and possibly yourself, Emma, but how, how has COVID impacted town operations and uh, public services? Especially um, lately. Start, yeah, I'll start. Um, it's impacted a, a lot. Um, you know, when it first hit, we did, we sort of um, got as many people out of the building as possible. And then we were gradually bringing people back into our buildings to be able to work. I think with the inf information that Emma's been sharing and giving us some guidance lately, 
we're we're depopulating our buildings again, uh, and the reason for that is to um, make make sure that if there is someone does have the disease or is exposed to someone to the, has the disease, uh, the rest of our workforce is protected. So we've been spending a lot of time to um, make sure people can work remotely, um, and so they're not exposing they're not being exposed to the, to the disease. Um, you know, we look at this in chunks of time. So we're looking at this until the end of January and feel like we're gonna have to really knuckle down and um, limit exposure of the dis to each other um, for, until the end of January. Um, and then we gotta reassess and see where we are. You know, you're starting to see some colleges already delay the start of their, their college years. You know, Amherst College just announced that they were delaying the, the opening of their semester. I think everybody's looking at the next four to eight weeks is pretty a, a, a pretty tough time. So, um, you know, we tons of precautions being undertaken at police, fire, DPW. Um, some of those jobs just have to be done. You know, they, they have to be done. So that's they're all ongoing. Um, schools is a totally different topic. I don't even want to go there because it's such a complicated topic. Um, but I think just in, for our employees, it's also for, just like everybody else. It's it's stressful and it's anxiety provoking, and it's it's it seems like it's going on forever, and everybody's feeling it. And um, so we're just trying to buck each other up and make sure that um, we can keep doing our jobs. There's a lot going on in town. There's a lot of projects that we're trying to get get moving and keep moving. So I don't know. I mean, Bree, what do you think? How do you think? Well, I, I'll, I, I guess I could speak a little bit more to our services. You know, we've been we've been really trying to offer new ways of connecting with our residents. Um, you know, mostly through new technologies because that's what we can do right now. Um, as well as trying to streamline um, online services, things you used to do, have to come to town hall for or chose to come to town hall for. How we can make that easy for you to do from home or from your phone. Um, we'll be having some some new communication tools come online, hopefully in the next week or so, to to kind of have another touch point with our community members, sharing public health information, but also other um, important information for people who are still, you know, using transit and um, public transportation. Or so I think that the focus the focus for me and some of my team was how do we recreate our services, um, but also enhance them and make them easier for people to use given this given this opportunity. And while still acknowledging that there is a digital divide and, and coming up with ways to bridge that while in this um, landscape has been has been a challenge, but we are well aware of it and we're we're working for some creative solutions um, to that. All right, so we are coming up on our half hour. That went quick. We have about we have about six minutes. So I can't um, believe it. Time flies when you're having fun, um, or at least in this in this chat. Um, I want to give a, a last call for folks in the room to to pop a comment or question in or raise your hand. Um, and while we wait for that, I'll, I'll give Emma a chance to leave us with anything she didn't get asked or some calls to action that she might have for you. Yeah, I, I think one thing that I really want to highlight is how much we're really all in this together, um, that we're all in this pandemic. And, and I want us to all just recognize that if, if we see others around us maybe having a hard time or um, maybe not responding in a, in a as th with as thoughtful wording as we maybe sometimes do in non-pandemic times, that mental health is is really important at the, right now, and in addition to going into winter, and I want people to be aware of depression and um, suicidality and the suicide epidemic that we're having um, at this time, and and be thoughtful of our neighbors and our loved ones and make sure that those people, if you can and have the ability to, to reach out to people and let them know how much they mean to us during this time. I think if, if we do all of those little things, those are, that are thoughtful to those around us, I think they're gonna mean so much more than this year than they would in other years. And I think they're gonna go a long way. Um, I think together we can build each other up 
Um, and I think community now more than ever means something different. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody for the hard work that we're doing. And, and this is really, I know I've heard this phrase so many times and sometimes it's, it's an, an unprecedented time, but it really is. And this is a time that I think none of us will ever forget. And I want us to all think about all of the good things that we did during this time to a positively affect our communities. And that's what I have to say about that. Thank you, Emma. I think it's really important. We have such a focus on these very specific public health reminders that are more, you know, physical, wash your hands, do this, do this. So I think um, mental health can often go forgotten with our other focus. So yeah, thanks for that go, reminder. Go outside and do a walk. Um, do those things that make you feel content, whether it's reading a book or or sitting with that nice fuzzy blanket that you just love and makes you feel safe, or those scents that also make you make you remember and feel grounded in a way, uh, or cook, um, right? Baking can be such a sensory experience. Those cookies or bread or other great things that people do in their homes. I think taking those moments to be mindful when we're home with our families or loved ones, or even in Zoom meetings, like we're in meetings, chat, like we're in right now in this room. I think those are the special carrots that we can take back with us. Um, that'll help fill our cup a little bit more than yesterday. Thank you. Very well said. All right, Paul, now, now, now your turn yeah, to follow gonna, up that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be more practical, you know, pretty, pretty simple. Um, there's a, the town's doing a lot. I mean, there's a lot happening. There's a lot coming up, you know, tonight, the, you know, in, in Zoom world, if it snows, it doesn't matter. We're having our meetings anyway. Um, tonight, the, one of the council committees is going to have a, start to have a more in-depth this the in-depth discussion about uh, proposed renovations to the North Common and the Main Street parking lot. That's going to, that's a major project for the council to take into consideration. That will come over, that will be on their agenda probably through the month of January. Um, we have another project, you know, a, a land purchase on Belcher Town Road that will be presented on Monday to the town council. Um, you know, Brianna was in charge of launching a redesigned website, which is really exciting to see the new, new design. And that just sort of is a, um, a preview of all the changes that we, we anticipate happening over the coming years. Um, you know, w w as these projects come forward, people say, how can I participate? And, and that's something we're working on. How do you participate? Um, we have the redesign of um, Pomeroy Village, Pomeroy, West Pomeroy and West Street, huge project that we want people to be engaged in. Uh, we have the North Amherst Library, you know, addition being worked on. So there's lots of projects happening. So it's just exciting time to be part of the town. And we've sort of figured out how to keep doing the work um, remotely when people have to be remote or collaboratively when we're in person. We aren't in person, you know, other than one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, socially distanced, but we really aren't talking everything in town staff. Oh, my bells, yes. Um, <laughs> Everything town staff is happening remotely like this as well. We're learning to do that in a lot better way too. Um, so, lots happening. That's that's my message to folks: is you know, 2021 is going to be a like a crazy year with lots of initiatives coming through the town. Very true. So stay tuned. And just a, a quick reminder, we won't be back the next two Thursdays, but we will be back with you on Thursdays at noon in the new year, uh, starting January 7th. So um, all of that information will be on our website, our community calendar, as well as our social media channels. Um, and if any suggestions or comments, concerns in general or specific to this meeting, please email us at info at amherstma.gov. Um, we'd be happy to hear from you. So I want to thank everybody who joined us live and a big thanks to Emma Dragon for taking um, a moment out of her very busy day to, to come give us some um, information. Thank you, Brianna. Thank Bye you. Emma.